Hello there. I am Pat Willie, the founder and CEO of the ministry, The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. Thanks for listening in tonight. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I pray that the word of God will bless you. It will be straight for you and that it will transform your life. All right, let's get started in the word of God. Again, thanks for joining me. Good evening, everyone. This is Pat Willie. I'm here in Dallas, Texas, and this is the gathering when women gather, when women worship. We are a group of ladies from across the United States who gather each Thursday night for time of Bible study and prayer. So thank you guys for being on. Thank you for your faithfulness. As I always say, I am very appreciative of you guys and your support for this ministry. For if it was not for you and your faithfulness and your dedication, this ministry would not be. So thank you guys for being on. I hope everyone had a good day today and we're settled in and we're going to have a quick lesson and a prayer and we're going to be finished for tonight. So again, thank all of you for calling in tonight. I am grateful. I am thankful to God for each of you. And I pray for you often. I pray for your families. I pray for your grandchildren that God would cover your lives and that he would do amazing things in your life. So know that I don't take it for granted. I am committed to praying for each of you. Sometimes I pray for you by region. If you live in a region, I got you covered. And then other times God gives me to call each of you by name and to pray for you. So thank you again. And God's choices, blessings upon your life. Just a couple of updates and we're going to get started. I have some exciting news and that is the gathering, the ministry, is going to be five years old on October 17th. And God has done some amazing, amazing things. I cannot tell you in this setting about all the things that our God has done through this ministry because a small group of women decided that they will devote themselves to prayer and Bible study, to live the best life, to have authentic relationship with God and others. And because of that, as I said, God has done some miraculous things. And it's because God gave, uh, downloaded this plan for this ministry. And then our sister Mary Jackson, who's over in Houston, Texas, said yes. We had our first meeting in her home in February 2018. And since then, God has just moved in miraculous ways. I don't have the words to describe it. So I'll just say it's been a fun ride to see what God can and will do when you devote yourself to his plan and you say yes to the Lord. So thank you guys for being on. You're going to hear more about our five-year celebration in the coming weeks, and we're going to celebrate the ministry being five years old, okay? So that's all the announcements I have for tonight. Why don't we pray and just get started with tonight's lesson? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We honor you. We give you praise. We're so grateful to be able to call you Lord. You are our God, our Savior, our Creator. We thank you for that. Now, God, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit in our lesson tonight. We pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you, O God, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened, that we would hear your voice, and that our voice would only become an echo of the things that we're hearing in the spirit. Your blessings upon everyone that's on the call tonight. You speak to them. As I speak, God, you speak to them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, this is The Gathering. This is Pat Willie. 
I'm here in Dallas, Texas. Thank you guys for being on. We are going to conclude the series tonight that we've been studying on for almost four weeks now, being a hearer and a doer of the word. Again, being a hearer and a doer of the word. For the last three weeks, we have discussed the various aspects of what it means to be a doer of the word and what it means to obey the plan of God for our lives. We studied uh, the life of three very notable people in the Bible, and we talked about how God used them and how their obedience had great impact in the kingdom of God. If you recall, we talked about Lydia, we talked about Joseph, and we finished last week talking about Paul and the call of God on his life. So we also talked about the truth that God wants to use all of us as, doer, as doers of the word to complete his plan for us. We establish the fact that God has no respect to persons. He does not love one more than the other. So God desires to use all of us. And he has a plan for all of our lives. It begins with obedience. And many times that obedience is manifested as a small random act of kindness. That is, being led by God. And we, when we see a need, we try and meet that need to the best of our abilities as God instructs us. Small acts of kindness have great kingdom act impact. Let me say that again. Small acts of kindness have great kingdom impact. And it's true that sometimes we lack opportunity. We want to do what God has called us to do, but we lack opportunity. So tonight we're going to talk about asking God for opportunity to do what his word has called us to do. Asking God for opportunity to be able to serve as he has ordained and called all of us to do. Before we get started with that tonight, I want to share with you all a vision and a prophecy that the Lord gave me last Friday. It was doing our prayer time on Facebook Live. And then you're going to be easily able to connect with the teaching tonight about being a doer of the word and having an opportunity to do what God is calling you to do. So here's the vision. As we were praying, I, I saw uh, the silhouette of a human, and let's just say a man. And he was standing in a doorway. The door was wide open. I saw the walls of the room as, that he was standing in. I saw the hinges on the door. The door opened to the left. I also saw the threshold of the doorway that led to the next space. The next space was wide open and just full or filled, I should say, with brightness. The man was standing at the threshold that divided an old space and a new space. Again, he was standing at a threshold that divided an old space from a new space. And here's what God is saying. That someone is standing in a doorway. The door is wide open. It is time that we walk into the blessings of God. It is time that we walk into the freedom of God. We must cross over us to be able to enjoy the joy of God. We have to practice walking through doors 
as an act of faith because God has opened the door glory, of opportunity for all of us. Open doors represent opportunity. It means that you're moving from one arena to another. And we all are moving to new opportunities. But this is in the spirit realm, and we must cross over by faith, glory be to God, from the old to the new faith. This is what Revelation 3, 7, and 8 said. And this is John, the apostle John. He's speaking to the church at Philadelphia. He says, and the angel, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write, these things, says the Lord, that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and he that shuts and no man opens. Verse 8 of that same chapter, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. So the scripture bears witness, and we said that the open door is an opportunity. And God is saying to you, I am going to give you new opportunities. You've been faithful? Yes. I will give you an opportunity and I will give you the strength so that you can walk through every open door. So, and it'll be a door that nobody can shut. It'll be a door that no one can shut. We've been praying for opportunities, and we've been asking God for opportunities. God is granting, granting us kingdom opportunities. The scripture reads, I will give you the desires of your heart when your ways please me, said God. Mm -hmm. Our ways please God when we want what God wants for us. Let me, let me rephrase that, glory. Our ways please God when we desire what God has for us, when we desire what God desires for us. The scripture also says, God will supply our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. It is God that supplies our daily bread. Our daily bread consists of the strength, the strategy, and the substance to do his will. And so God is saying, I'm going to give you the strength through grace, a strategy and a plan, and I'm going to give you the substance that's needed to support what I'm calling you to do. To walk into the open door. To walk through the open door. To leave your own arena and walk into the newness that God is calling all of us. An open door also represents exposure. An open door is opportunity. An open door is exposure. God says, I am going to to expose you, yeah, to a level of blessing and teaching that you have never experienced before. Glory be to God. I am going to open our understanding so that we can understand scripture in order that we may be able to carry out his plan and that we may be effective in the kingdom of God. We have to step into the opportunity. We have to step into the opportunity. 
how do I get to opportunity? Well, no first thing that God's going to open the door. The next thing is you have to pray for an opportunity. In Galatians 3 and 4, Paul frequently asks the saints to pray for him. And this is what he asked the saints to pray for him in Colossians 3 and 4. Pray for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bounds. So you have to ask God to open a door of opportunity for you. Glory be to God. If you're going to step out of the old into the new, God has already opened the door. Yes, ask God for the opportunity to glory be to God. Step in and do the things that he has called you to do. You have to trust God to open the, oppor- the door and give you an opportunity. Paul talking to the Corinthians church, he says, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. He says, God has opened a door for me, a great door, in order that I may preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, glory. It is working according to the scripture and many of the adversaries. So one door on, uh, uh, open often leads to many doors opening. But you got to take the first step. Furthermore, he said, when I came to Taurus to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened unto me of the Lord. So God will open the door. Glory be to God. But the door is not going to open unless you pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God will open the door. But you got to have targeted prayers in your life. And once God opened the door, you had to step out of old arenas into new arenas. Paul says, when I came, meaning I arrived at a new city, and there I also found additional opening door, open doors to preach the word of God. The next step is you got to go through the door. So pray for an opportunity. Trust God. Open it. Go through the door. Cross over into the new area, the new arena. Cross over from being just a hearer to becoming a doer. The scripture says, Proverbs 3 and 27. Withhold not good from them when it is in your power to do so. Glory be to God. So I told you at the beginning of the lesson, as you find opportunities to give, seize that opportunity and do good to others. Galatians 6 and 10 says, therefore, we have opportunity. Glory be to God. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now, anytime you step out into new arenas and opportunities, the scripture says there will be adversaries. There will be things that happen to try and stop you. But what you have to be confident in is that God will take care of all opposing sources. God will take care of all opposing forces. God's grace will be present to help you and to give you favor with God and man. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency, glory be to God, 
may abound in every good work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that may be an opposing force, but God's grace, thank you, that he's given to you, that he's given to all of us, yes, will cause you to be able to abound and increase, glory be to God, in every good work. The Easy Bible, you guys know how much I love the Easy Bible and how it reads. Same scripture in the Easy Bible. Since God loves you, he's able to give you more than you need. You will always have every good thing that you need for yourself. And you will have enough to do many good things to help other people. So, obeying God, glory be to God, is an opening to a channel and a conduit of blessings, not only for ourselves, but it puts us in a position, it puts us in the place so we are able to bless others. And that's why the devil don't want you to receive the knowledge of being a doer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why the devil don't want you to step into open doors, because once you believe it and you start to activate it in your life, not only will you be blessed, but you'll be put in a position to help others. Because when we cross over, thank you, Holy Ghost, the threshold of being a, from being a hero only into the arena of the open door of being a doer, God gives us what is needed to get the work done. Mm -hmm. Again, he gives us enough to meet our needs and to meet the needs of others. Glory be to God. Declare this with me. This is my season of open doors. Glory be to God. Declare it with me. This is my season of open doors. There are opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Open doors of blessings and opportunities to meet the needs of God, of others. Glory be to God. And opportunities to carry out the plan of God in your life. But it won't be done unless we take action. We must develop a kingdom mindset. The blessings of God are given to me for the kingdom verse. Yes, they're for me, but they're also to expand and advance the kingdom of God. But the scripture says, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. So it's God's kingdom that we want to build and advance first. And when we have that mindset that we are kingdom builders, God will supply the power and God will empower us to do what needs to be done in the kingdom. And when it's done, it's all for his glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. God has everything that we need when we say yes to him. I'm going to tell my testimony and we're finished. My testimony is that any of you know we just finished the gathering host summit in Chicago. It was Simply amazing, awesome. I don't have the words to express how amazing God was and his blessings were just awesome. And for that, we give God glory and we give God praise. That said, it was a very expensive endeavor, very expensive, thousands of dollars went into that project. We had some last minute cancellation. And for those who didn't show up and waited to the last minute 
to cancel their room. There was a surcharge on all of those rooms. Remember what we said about the scripture? I will be placed before you an open door. An open door has been placed before us, and the adversary is there. And many are the adversaries. So, again, at the very last minute, there were cancellations. And because of that, some people didn't think that they should pay the surcharge, that they didn't owe anything. And after a couple of conversations of going back and forth, I said to each of them, you know what? I release you of the debt. You don't owe me anything. You don't owe the ministry anything. I release the debt. And so I was left with paying an additional $2,800 to $2,900 because of that. And many are the adversaries. When you step out to do what God has called you to do, mm, there's always opposition. You cannot allow the opposition to keep you from doing what God has called you to do because your projects are kingdom projects. And God has the power, the funds, and whatever you need be able to do the work that he's called you to do. Well, that wasn't all. While I was there, I, I broke my cute little designer eyeglasses broke while I was there. And I'm thinking, now I need to get home and replace these glasses. And here is when the blessings start. Remember I told you I released the debt I notified the people, I go, you don't owe me anything. I released the debt of $2,800, $2,900. My eyeglasses broke, okay? I got back and I called my optometry office to speak with the technician. Listen for God, listen how God bless. And I knew that those glasses were a few hundred dollars. She said to me, Miss Willie, your frames and your lenses are absolutely free. They're under warranty and there will not be any cost. God will. <laughs> Glory be to take care of the opposing forces. Then when I went to pick up the glasses, she gave me a third lens. She said, if you happen to stretch one of them, you hold on to this one and we'll just pop it in there for you for free. God will take care of the opposition. Well, if that wasn't enough, I'm just testifying, you guys. I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what God will do if you're willing to step out on his word, if you're willing to step out of old arenas into new arenas. Glory, I'm just a country girl. I'm from Carthage, Texas. Glory be to God. And I just believe in obeying God. That same week, someone gifted me an American Express gold card and said, use this to pay for things in the ministry. Came in the mail. Glory be to God. I looked at it. And it said on there that you have been a member since 2009. Now that was back in my old chief nursing officer days when I made a lot of money. And it said on there, this card has no limit. My God. Now I don't believe in credit card debt. I don't, mm -mm, I don't. But sometimes when you're carrying a ministry, and you're doing it within a world system. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our American Express gold card, without any limits, will get me anywhere in the United States and outside and internationally or anywhere I want to go. And that was 
as a result of me stepping out. Glory be to God. To do what God has called me to do. Well, if that wasn't enough, let me just keep testifying. One of the physicians I used to work with, pulmonologist, contacted me on Messenger. He said, us, Pat, what are you doing? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, uh, do you need a little help? I didn't say anything about the ministry of anything. He said, I'm going to send you a donation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, you know what? We're planning a trip, a trip to Bali, Indonesia. He says, I'll send the donation. So he volunteered. And it had to be the favor of God that even dropped money and the ministry and what he's seeing on Facebook in his heart to say, I will help fund the mission trip to Bali, Indonesia. That's God. I give him glory. I give him praise. The opposition came, but the power of God was greater. Glory be to God. All of that happened because I chose to step out and through an open door. The whole a meeting in Chicago. There was opposition, yes. But did God bless me more with more than I needed? Yes. Is the scripture true tonight? I'm a witness. <laughs> it's a testimony that's true. I'm a witness. Glory be to God. So that I may be able to give to others to the glory of God. We'll close with this. I'm finished. Hustle, Ivy Hilliard from um, Houston. Some of you may know him. A very renowned apostle. He said um, this this week. I was listening to him. Didn't even know what he was teaching on. I just turned him on and he was on, uh, on Facebook. He said, this is a season of open doors. He says, God is going to open extraordinary and extravagant blessings for his people. Let me say it again. This is a season of open doors. Holy be to God. God is opening extraordinary, extravagant blessings for his people. And I will say that it starts with all of us obeying God. Walk into the arena that I'm going to be a doer of God's word. God is able to fund everything that he has called you to do. All he's asking you to do is obey. He will provide the strength that you need. Mm. He'll provide a strategy. And he'll also provide the substance in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm finished. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you praise. We feel your presence. We feel the anointing in the Spirit of God moving up on our hearts and our minds. We heard your word that you are opening doors of opportunity for all of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have blessings for all of us. 
And God, because you do not have respect a person, you love us all the same. We thank you for the great blessings and the great opportunities that we all have to do your work, to advance the kingdom of God. For your word's sake, thank you, Holy Ghost. Give, and it shall be given. Mm. Glory. When we give unto you, God, there's always a reciprocal blessing. Glory be to God. Glory. When we obey you, there's always a reciprocal blessing that's attached to it. Ah, oh, God, thank you. Glory. And we give you glory when we give you praise. That the blessing of God is being manifested in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. As you said, you will cause men to give unto us. We thank you, God, that as we align our lives with your word and with your will, we step out of all arenas. Oh, God, thank you. All ways of thinking, all the ways of doing things. We step over into the favor of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. And we become doers of your word and not hearers only. We thank you for your blessings upon our lives. We thank you for your blessings upon our children. We thank you for your blessings upon our grandchildren. We thank you for your blessings upon our homes. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for every opportunity that we have to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. And everything that we do, we do it as unto the Lord with all of our might, with all of our strength, in Jesus' name. And we give you glory for it. Mm. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise, the great blessings, the great anointing that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hello there. This is Pat Willie again. Thanks for listening in to this week's Bible's lesson. I know you were blessed by the word as I was. Join us again next week as we gather to learn more about the Word of God. Blessings now. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen.